The mayor reportedly read his police department the riot act the other day. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you in part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. What mayor is that? If I had to ask you uh, to guess which mayor might be inclined to do that, you might guess Mayor North Providence, Charlie Lombardi, because you'd be correct. He's not the only guy that, you know, has to stand up sometimes and set everybody straight, but he did the other day, and uh, he's got an interesting, he's got an interesting, interesting dilemma. Uh, he's got a problem with his North Providence Police Department that he really isn't directly responsible for, yet he's where the buck stops. He's defending litigation against the town, but the circular and incestuous nature of this litigation is peculiar and actually fascinating. We'll uh, get to that coming up in a little bit. Nice to have you aboard on this Thursday evening. Let's go to the rundown and just check on some of the things that are happening in the world. I mean, this is just terrible. With all this going on in Washington, we actually got distracted from this seemingly terrorist attack in Washington. The, I'm sorry, in London, rather. The, uh, the uh, suspect is identified. And the sad part of this, amongst many sad things, is that two Americans uh, were victims, one lost his life, married couple on vacation, and uh, interestingly enough, a Boston couple was stuck up on that London Eye for hours, that huge Ferris wheel. Uh, no joke there. Uh, they, they came out okay, but they actually had a bird's eye view like this, higher still. I get woozy just thinking about being up that high that long. Uh, it seems like the authorities uh, have this down to a potentially isolated event. ISIS claims responsibility and what else can you say? Uh, it's a fact of our, unfortunately, a fact of our daily lives. What's unprecedented though is the politics in Washington right now when Congressman Nunez decided to take a little trip to the White House yesterday. He blew the cover off of what really is the way protocol usually goes with House intelligence. Here's the headline. Los Angeles Times has it kind of right. It did rock everything. Here's an update. House Intelligence Committee Chairman Devin Nunes, a former member of the president's transition team, came to the White House with new surveillance revelations. I briefed the president on the concerns that I had. Nunes told reporters conversations of Trump transition officials, including possibly the president-elect, were recorded between November and January. On numerous occasions, the intelligence community incidentally collected information about U.S. citizens involved in the Trump transition. The California Republican angered Democrats by briefing Mr. Trump before the full Intelligence Committee. The president needs to know that this in, these intelligence reports are out there. Nunes said an unidentified source showed him about a dozen intercepted communications. None, he said, involved Russia. But Nunes fretted that Mr. Trump's name and those of other transition members were not redacted as intercepts circulated within the intelligence community. Thank you all very much. The president was asked if he felt vindicated about his false claim former President Obama ordered wiretapping of his Trump Tower phones. I very much appreciated the fact that uh, uh, they found what they found, but I somewhat do. This is deeply troubling. Adam Schiff, the top Intelligence Committee Democrat, questioned Nunes's ability to lead the investigation and insisted that there is evidence of collusion between Russia and Trump officials. There is more than circumstantial evidence now. Republican Senator John McCain joined the Democrats' call for an independent committee. No longer does the Congress have credibility to handle this alone. And uh, because of Nunez's actions yesterday, uh, they don't know what they're going to do. He apologized. Look at this headline. Yeah, I shouldn't have done it. Uh, the cover that he tried to establish, I think, for the president is clear. Now, there are those who will see it different ways, but it's clear. And I think he probably woke up this morning thinking, my credibility's gone. All right, health care votes. It's a big deal. As we speak right now, they're still trying to accumulate the votes uh, on the Republican House side, and it's not an easy tussle. Headlines here indicate uh, what the challenge is. And, of course, in the past, the Washington Post and others have reported that 24 million people could lose their health care because of the transition of Medicaid, the lack of tax penalty that would be in this whole thing, and people feeling like they have more options not to buy. A uh, quick update on that. 
Republican leaders are scrambling to figure out how to move forward with their plan to repeal and replace Obamacare. As of Thursday morning, CBS News counts at least 31 GOP members who plan to vote no on the bill. At least nine Republicans would have to change their minds to pass the bill. I thought I was a good deal maker. I'm nothing compared to the president's. <laughs> members of the conservative House Freedom Caucus were invited to the White House for a closed door meeting with President Trump, who's trying to get their support. The caucus is demanding the plan lower health care premiums by rolling back essential health benefits, which mandates coverage for services like emergency room visits, maternity care, prescription drugs, and mental health. If we don't lower premiums, this bill does not do enough. The conservative Koch brothers have set up a fund to support the re-election of any Republican voting no on the bill. But as the White House and Republican leaders make concessions to conservatives, moderates are rethinking their support for the plan. Republicans vote to destroy health care coverage, especially in this brutal form. Well, that vote is going to be tattooed to their heads. They can't say Donald Trump made me do it. Pennsylvania Congressman Charlie Dent met with House Speaker Paul Ryan late into the night. Afterward, he issued a statement saying he will oppose the bill and that he hopes the House can step back from this vote and arbitrary deadline to focus on getting health care reform done right. Meanwhile, the governor today had a briefing with the media talking about the millions of dollars that Rhode Island is going to come up with, has to come up with, and we short if these reforms come through in whatever form they do. It's going to mean a reemphasis on states replenishing Medicaid to keep the insured that came on board with Obamacare continuously insured. So it's, uh, it's going to be messy. But, you know, no matter what the House does tonight, if they actually accomplish a vote, It'll be a beaten up package. It'll go to the Senate. It'll be beaten up some more. It'll come back. This thing is far from begun in some ways rather than far from over. Speaking of the governor and what she's going to do there, she's going to have some new partners, of course, on the Senate side. Uh, this didn't make our rundown, but I just wanted to uh, just we sometimes leave some things out by accident. But uh, wanted to note that Senate President Teresa Pivaweed uh, resigned her post yesterday to be the president of the Rhode Island Hospital Association, uh, the Association of Rhode Island Hospitals. Or it's something close to that. Anyway, Senator Ruggiero is going to be the uh, new guy, it seems. And that will change some of the dynamics on some key issues like free tuition, the car tax, and marijuana. And we will examine that next week. In the meantime, here is a headline that the North Providence folks are dealing with. It is a headline that was in the paper. It's actually the one on the left. Sometimes we zoom that out. We apologize for not getting that done. But report lewd but not illegal. All right, this is a, an independent uh, report that was commissioned by the North Providence mayor when uh, litigation began from a female lieutenant who said that she was sexually harassed. Good evening, mayor. Good evening, Dan. You need this like a hole in the head? Yeah. <laughs> As I stated once before, it's can't catch a break. Yeah, well, come on. You know, you've, uh, you, you got, you know, your finances in North Providence are in pretty good shape. You like a good battle every once in a while, although I can't I can't pin this one on you. This is what happens when you decide that you're going to continue to be the custodian of a town that has some flavor. Um, long story made short, uh, you know what we probably ought to do? Uh, why don't we pause here? The reason I'm going to pause here, wait, yeah, what, 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 why don't you do this? Why don't you give me a summary judgment on, on what this case is about? Then we'll show the report on it. And then we'll dig into what I think is a very provocative decision made uh, recently to, to address the command staff. Yes, so <clears throat> there was a complaint uh, someone brought to my attention that uh, there was a statement made and, um, you know, what I thought wasn't, uh, you know, very, very professional on the part of any law enforcement officer and more importantly in any uh, uh, business sector. And um, so I called the lieutenant and Lieutenant Perez, nice young lady, and asked her, what happened? You got an outside source from the police department to tell you that this woman had a story to tell because she she was, you know, I don't know, victimized or yeah. or the recipient of commentary. I'm not too sure Whether when I called her in right. if she really wanted to tell any story. Hmm. Cause? Because when I asked the lieutenant what happened, she her first statement to me was, how do you know? And I said, does it matter? She said, no, no, come on, Mayor, tell me how you know. And I said, that's not going to happen. I said, so what happened? She said, well, I really didn't want it to go this far. I said, well, it went this far. Well, she's litigating. Well, no, she, she wasn't litigating at the time. At that she time, and you. this is the point I'm trying to make. So 
I didn't know where it was going to go then. And then within a couple of three weeks, I receive a formal complaint from her. So it was a little um, concerning to me that when I brought it to the attention, I'm the guy that did this, by the way, and I'm happy that I did, because it, now no one's going to be able to accuse me of knowing about it and not doing anything about it. Mm. So I'm happy I did. And then three weeks later, I don't know who the lieutenant discussed this with after, but then she filed a complaint. All right, we'll uh, show you the summary of the story when we come back. Uh, it's very peculiar because the union is promoting action against the town, but they're union members that are actually at fault bringing, to bring the action. Stay with us. I think this story will help you understand the, the foundation of our conversation tonight. Nine months after it was commissioned by the mayor, an investigative report into the North Providence Police Department is finished. Allegations made by Lieutenant Diana Perez in a lawsuit against the department and its interim chief all ruled legally unfounded. I am relieved with the findings and conclusions that there has been no actionable hostile environment, sexual harassment, no gender discrimination. Although the report found no legal grounds for harassment and discrimination, it did conclude there were comments made to Perez, including some about her body, that were objectively offensive. The inter-office banter is okay or thought to be funny at times when we are all getting along. Perez sat in the front row of the mayor's Monday news conference and told Eyewitness News off camera, through tears, she never thought she'd have to fight for her dignity. She's been on leave since last year. The fact that the mayor couldn't look Diana in her face once tells you everything you need to know about this mayor. Perez's attorney says they will continue to battle the town in court and will be examining whether the town colluded with the attorneys paid to compile the report. All right, so the, the idea that you didn't, uh, you didn't look at her, you told me on the radio that you just didn't want to accelerate the situation, correct? That's correct, and you know, would I say I'm afraid? Well, not that I was afraid, but I thought that if I even had eye contact with this young woman, that the first thing I would be accused of, even if it's two or three seconds, hey, did you see him? Did you see him staring at me? So I thought I, no reason to get into that. Huh. Well, that, that's a that's a matter of judgment for you. I, you may think it's a damn if you do, damn if you don't situation. But I, in a way, I admire her for going and sitting in front of you while while you while you issued your your report. But basically, as the report, meaning our news report, um, indicates, there's some really bad behavior here. Absolutely. But there's no consensus of, with uh, Mr. DeSisto's report that. You don't feel like you need to run into a settlement or some kind of, uh, well, let me ask no. you this. Do you feel like you got to go into a settlement? Because you don't think that there's real sexual harassment here as a systemic problem for this officer, correct? That's correct, and I don't feel that the town should be looking to um, make any settlement. I think the, the lieutenant and both the town need to, you know, go through the process. Her attorney, one of her attorneys, not this one, but his partner, called the radio show last week and indicated that at some point he had reached out and tried to make some kind of non-monetary settlement so that she could get back to work because they, they perceive her and she perceives herself. And I think you perceive her as a competent police officer who may have a bright future. You want to put this love thing together? To, love, to, love to have her come back. <clears throat> I stated that at the, at the uh, um, press conference. If, if you had anything to say to the lieutenant, what would you say? And I said I would say that, um, you know, she did a good job. We need for her to come back to work. Now, <clears throat> as far as they reaching out to the town, I checked with three attorneys. They said the only thing that they could find was a um, an email that said you know she liked at some point she'd like to come back to work as to any type of um, you know any other comments uh, what would be the agreement what would the town have to live up to I don't know anything of that all right you in addition to issuing this report that cost what thirty or forty thousand dollars then okay in addition to that report that preceded the press conference, you made a visit, and you just dropped on me, the, the script of your statement March 21st at 11 a.m. to the command staff of the North Providence Police Department. And I've been able to breeze through it, didn't read it completely, but 
if I'm not mistaken, a quick breeze of this tells me that you kind of read in the riot act. And I did because then when I, <clears throat> excuse me, when I commissioned uh, this um, inquiry or this report, so to say, I asked Mr. DeSisto not only to address the lieutenant's uh, claim or complaint, to look at the whole police department. And I think what happened here, Dan, am I happy about it? No. Am I frustrated? Yes. And am I embarrassed? Most certainly. But I think a few of the officers that have been named here never thought that this would come out. And there's more that I've found out, you know, now that this is what going on. What kind of things came out? Well, in other words, um, some of the statements. Uh, Meaning you know, in the context of the sexual harassment situation. Right. Yeah, there's some right. pretty really, there's, there's some lewd stuff there's, here. There's no, there's no, no doubt about, no doubt that. about it. But, but is it boys being boys with a girl in the middle of the boys and the girl actually was playing around with the boys? Meaning, playing, I'm, talk, I'm, talk, I'm not talking about misbehavior, but just kind of dealing with it and, you know, giving it back. I mean, this is a, <laughs> this is a classic uh, on the line sexual harassment case where everyone kind of feels like, eh, it's fine until somebody finally says it's not so fine, right? That's exactly what my statement was about the bantering. Look, it happens everywhere until you got a problem with me, I have a problem with you. Now it becomes harassment. <clears throat> and the more I'm listening to some of the officers that are starting to come forward now of some of the statements that have been made there in front of the lieutenant and you know, or her being involved, it's disappointing, you know, it shouldn't happen. Well, here's the funny thing about, about the whole situation. You learn about a sexual harassment possibility. You bring the officer in. She says, according to you, where'd you hear about it? Isn't it actually showing any proclivity to want to talk to you about it? A few weeks later, you get a complaint. You do the investigation. Now you got some litigation threats. She's a good officer who ought to be able to get back on the job with some kind of reconcile. Her lawyer suggests, though, that it's a, 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 a an obvious litigation win, but he's not suggesting necessarily that they need money. The union is pressing this on her behalf, yet most of the personnel in the police department who are implicated in this report having caused the environment that causes the litigation are members of the union. <laughs> so what do you do now? So this is, this is the dilemma, Dan. So now we go out and we start to reprimand the captain that made that very bad statement. We reprimand the lieutenant that made another statement. We reprimand another lieutenant, a sergeant or a couple of sergeants. They're all protected by the Bill of Rights. We've been through this three or four times before. Which is going to cost you dough, the townspeople dough. Ton, a ton of money. And in the end, and in the end, when you look at the report, the report says there's no sexual harassment. So we're trying to but figure out. that's not a report, that's not a judicial or, ju or jury decision. That is, that's a pretty doggone good lawyer who, who, yeah. who's got a perspective on this uh, and who, who gave you, obviously, uh, some objective fact um, um, scenario here. At the same time, her lawyers will see it differently. How do you work your way out of this whole thing? Well, when I went in the other day, I told them, hey, look, you know, um, I hope everyone's proud of themselves here. <laughs> uh, but, and, you know. It's not like my mother when I was, when I get need, myself jammed up. But you need, to, you need to work this out. You might not like him. He may not like you. We have a police department to run. It's the law enforcement agency of the town. This is not any, you know, well, I don't want to downgrade any other department. This does not need to happen. It's not going to happen. Does it happen with change of leadership? I mean, Chief Pelagio the, is the acting chief. Um, I mean, you've been fairly bullish on him. Are you still evaluating his situation? I, I am. I will say this to you. He's, um, he's sharp at the edges. He's all cop. And when you're faced with some of this nonsense, Dan, it's very easy to get frustrated. And it's very easy. Look, this, some of the things that he said was not good, not right. But, I mean, I know some of the things there, and I think you know me. I don't know that I could have even, you know. Well, the acting chief is, 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 is sort of implicated in this litigation, but he's not the, he's not the nastiest player no. in it. Uh, the union doesn't like him, right? They don't like him. Here's, here's my take on this, yeah. if I can. <clears throat> so the lieutenant comes in to me 
I call her in 7 o'clock in the morning. How did you find out? We go through that. Three weeks later, she files a complaint. The whole world knows that I've had a problem with the union. They picket my announcer around my right. headquarters, the union president, the whole ball of wax. Then all of a sudden, here comes the complaint. I showed you a picture here. No one's going to tell me that the union did not take yeah, a play. Yeah, well, yeah, this, this picture is what of the uh, the complainant and her lawyer and it's, it's the union's your, lawyer and the union president. Uh, so, so you're. Uh, you think there's a bigger agenda here? Absolutely. All right, when we come back, we'll tell you what that is. And by the way, there's some good financial news. But it's not a problem in case you're interested. Stay with us. <laughs> All right, bottom line, the, the problem in North Providence is not necessarily the chief, but it, you know, will, will a change of leadership and be inevitable here? Uh, because you can't be running the police department all the time. No, and I'm not, listen, and I'm not running it now. I don't micromanage. They know what I expect of them, and hopefully after this meeting the other day, they all understand it's no nonsense. I'll give you an example, Dan. Yesterday morning, I couldn't sleep. It was about 3 o'clock in the morning. I went to the police station. I walked in the police station at 4 a.m. The first guy that answered the door, I said, I'm sorry I woke you. You want to blame the chief? They got to straighten out their own problem. My problem is how much money do I expend at the taxpayers' dollars? Fighting litigation. Trying to bring them to their senses. I keep saying, then, as I said with the fire department, and we're going on getting along great now, your job is to run to the police calls. We'll take care of running the police department. They want to run the police department. And in the meantime, then. Meaning the union. Right. In the meantime, $87,000 was the average pay up there. Right. The pension is funded over well, 90%. We is, is, there a, is there a timetable on reviewing the chief situation, uh, or is that just something that's uh, to be determined? To be determined. Right. By the way, you got a good ratings report. Uh, you got 30 seconds to tell me how <laughs> successful the bond rating is. It went up, right? This is the sixth bond rating uh, increase that we've gotten since I've been there. We're one step above junk bond when I came here. We're bound $10.5 million a year for cash flow. We couldn't buy anything. We're now a double-A bond-rated town, and we have an $8 million surplus. We're seven years ahead of uh, the program that we set to take the town out of financial disaster. And there's your update on the town of North Providence. Well, it's never boring. No, it's, 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 yeah, it's never boring, but I mean, I wish it could get a little bit better. I think it's the water they drink on Middle Spring Avenue, Dan. Really? Yeah, middle spring. That's that's water. Maybe you should. Maybe you should. <laughs> maybe, you should maybe you should check the plumbing. There might be a little, some bad pipes. Uh, well, final word when we come back. Stay with us.